That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. All right, guys, before we get into the video, I have a couple major announcements. One, if you are currently a part of a Flock Dynasty Fantasy Football League, I want to remind everyone, league dues are due on January 20th. If you want to guarantee your spot in that Flock League for the 2021 season, and also, if you are wanting to get in a Dynasty Fantasy Football League with myself and the other listeners of this channel, we are going to start filling leagues on the 21st. We are going to start new leagues. We are going to be putting people in our current leagues. Really, whatever you're interested in, there should be a spot for you. That is going to be exclusive for Patreon members. If y'all would like to join to support the channel, that link is going to be down below. And also for this current mock draft, it was completed with all members on Patreon supporting the channel. And here, that is exactly where you are going to find the mock draft board. If you would look like to look at every single selection, if you would like to go through and view the draft, that link will also be through Patreon. You do not need to sign up. You do not need to pay anything to see the draft board. It was just a very easy spot for me to put up a screenshot of the draft. Could not do that on the YouTube comment section. Didn't want to have to try to do that in the video, make y'all pause and worry about the focus or pan over. So yeah, just put that screenshot on Patreon for anybody to see if you want to check out the entire mock draft. Well, that's it, and let's start talking about this, and let's dive in to the best values in my opinion. Maybe for future videos, I'll go round by round, but for this particular one, I just wanted to hit the key players that I thought were drastically undervalued, and the first one is going to be a player that was selected very early on in this Dynasty mock draft. At the eighth overall pick, we are going to have Saquon Barkley. Okay, so here with Saquon Barkley, I mean absolutely insane that he was drafted behind Derrick Henry, behind Alvin Kamara, behind Dalvin Cook, behind DeAndre Swift. I mean, personally, I don't understand this. I don't understand the thought process of selecting any of these guys over a Saquon Barkley, knowing that Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook are all already off their rookie contracts. All of these players are playing under their second contract a year in to their second contract. We know in the case of a player like Derrick Henry, really he only has one year left of guaranteed money. And I know people do not want to accept the fact that these veteran elite running backs fall off so much quicker than we want to believe. I know he's only 26. I know he's only 27. I mean, with players like Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, we can say the same thing about a David Johnson, a Le'Veon Bell. I mean, these players were at the very top of the NFL just a few years ago. And you go from being at the very top to being a complete afterthought in fantasy football very soon. Still players that have a tremendous amount of value, but not guys that you could ever consider selecting over Saquon Barkley, given the fact that Saquon Barkley is still on his rookie contract. He should be for the next few seasons. And in my opinion, Saquon Barkley is the most talented running back in the entire NFL. He is the most athletic running back. We know that he's also an elite pass catcher. And if you just look at what he's able to do in the open field, I mean, Saquon Barkley is truly elite at the position, but more so than anything. I mean, I don't even want to talk about their respective talents because yes, that is predictive on future fantasy success. But what is more so predicted is contract situation and the player archetype at their career point. And here with Saquon Barkley, I mean, he clearly has at the very minimum three years of top end production left in him. And that's at the minimum. He could go longer than that. Where with Dalvin Cook, with Alvin Kamara, with Derrick Henry, I mean, if we're looking at the 2022 football season and we're talking about these players being in that same range of a David Johnson, a Todd Gurley, a Le'Veon Bell. I mean, yes, it would suck, but it's not out of the range of outcomes. Okay, so now let's go over and let's talk about a wide receiver that I was so high on coming into the NFL draft this past year. We had him as our rookie wide receiver three overall, and this is going to be Justin Jefferson. 
Okay, so here Justin Jefferson was selected as the first rookie wide receiver in this startup draft with the eighth pick in the third round by the same team. I mean, they absolutely killed the early part of the draft. And Justin Jefferson was selected after some quarterbacks that, in my opinion, had no business being selected in his range. I mean, Mitchell Trubisky went over Justin Jefferson. Now, this is a super flex league, and I'm assuming that was just a homer pick. Trubisky should not have gone off the board for multiple rounds. Just want to point that out. That's how laughable that is. Also, was selected after Aaron Rodgers, a quarterback that, yes, is at the top of his game, but we understand that we don't have that much longer on the Aaron Rodgers elite bandwagon to ride because of his career status and the fact that the Green Bay Packers decided to select a quarterback in the first round of this past year's draft. Not only select a quarterback, but trade up to get one. I think that indicates that they don't necessarily expect Aaron Rodgers to be that elite option for them for the next four seasons. Then also, Justin Jefferson was selected ahead of DeAndre Hopkins, a wide receiver that's seven or eight years older than him at this point. And Justin Jefferson is already giving you the same type of production in fantasy. So Justin Jefferson, another player that I love at that range. And now let's go over and let's talk about three wide receivers that went back to back to back because I thought it was ridiculous with how far they fell. I mean, we have Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin, and Mike Evans going at the 509, the 510, and the 511. I mean, can you imagine getting a player like this at the very end of your fantasy draft? I mean, a superb value with all of these guys, um, especially Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, being younger than you would expect. They were selected after Deontay Johnson, after Keenan Allen, and after Jerry Judy. Now, this is something I cannot get behind. I mean, Chris Godwin, y'all know, was a player that I hated on two years ago, and I was so wrong. But if you look at what he's been able to do at his age at this point of his NFL career, I mean, he's someone that should easily be going at least around before this. Okay, now let's get to our next guy, another rookie wide receiver. And in my opinion, the best value of this entire draft selected by the same team who took Saquon Barkley, the same team that took Justin Jefferson. I need to reach out to this guy and congratulate him on this mock draft because he killed it. And this is Brandon Ayuk with the eighth pick in the seventh round. I mean, guys, Brandon Ayuk has been an elite producer almost every game that he was healthy for the San Francisco 49ers this season. Now, yes, we're going to expect the opportunity scaled back slightly going into next year when they have a healthy George Kittle and a healthy Debo Samuel. But him taking on that role in the offense his rookie season, him Putting up those type of numbers does not warrant a 7th round selection. It warrants, at the very minimum, a 6th, maybe a 5th round selection. He was taken after A.J. Dillon, a player that I really like, but, I mean, what? He was taken after Derek Carr, after Adam Thielen, after Sam Darnold, after Kareem Hunt, after Miles Gaskin, after Kenyon Drake. I mean, Brandon Ayuk is a player that you can build your dynasty around. There's no reason... He should be falling that much in any dynasty mock or startup draft. Okay, so now another superb value. You're going to notice a trend, guys. I I mean, after we get past the early rounds, every value player we're going to be talking about is at wide receiver. And what this tells us is this tells us you better be drafting running back early in your dynasty startup drafts. And once we get past those top 10 guys, You cannot take another running back. I mean, I want to draft two running backs, and then I want to draft 12 wide receivers in a row. And then I'll use that wide receiver guaranteed value later on this offseason, and I'll trade them for some running backs that are then sliding in to perceived starting jobs or maybe backups with upside because the running backs were so far overdrafted in this draft, and the wide receivers fell to a fantastic value where a team got Corey Davis at the 12-13 round turn, I mean, Corey Davis went behind J.D. McKissick. Corey Davis went behind Joshua Kelly. He went behind Antonio Brown, Brian Edwards, and Gus Edwards. And while I know Corey Davis just has a stink to go along with his name because of his early career failures, I mean, in 2020, he put up a decent season. Nothing to laugh at. He's a free agent. 
He could find himself on a better offense. He could find himself in Green Bay. I mean, guys, please here with Corey Davis. Be selecting him much earlier than this. Now our next player is going to be Christian Kirk. Very similar here. Christian Kirk going off the board in the middle of round 14 with the sixth pick. I mean, behind Philip Lindsay, behind the Michael P. Ryan, Chase Edmonds, Darrington Evans. I mean, Chase Edmonds, yes, is a player that could be looking at a starting job in Arizona if Kenyon Drake does not stay there. But that's not guaranteed. They could bring in another running back. Christian Kirk has a guaranteed role. I mean, Christian Kirk is entering the prime of his NFL career. What are we doing here with these wide receivers? I mean, please start selecting these wide receivers earlier. Do not be drafting these running backs in this range. I, I mean, it's horrendous. Now our next player, McCole Hardman, going to be the last player we talk about here. I mean, went off the board with the second pick in the 16th round. Do y'all not understand that Sammy Watkins is playing his last year under contract for the Kansas City Chiefs? McCole Hardman was a very raw player coming into the NFL with elite athletic traits. And now McCole Hardman is going to be stepping up into a better role in 2021 while he is continuing to polish his skills as a wide receiver. And now he's going behind a running back like DJ Dallas a running back that may not even be on an NFL roster next year in Latavius Murray. Some wide receivers that have never proven to even have a role on their offenses in Van Jefferson, Devin Duvernay. I mean, McCole Hardman with the second pick in the 16th round. Fantastic value. And I want to just echo what I've been saying throughout this entire video. If you are picking in the middle rounds or later rounds in your dynasty startup draft right now, do not be taking the J.D. McKissick. Do not be taking the Gus Edwards. Do not be taking the Philip Lindsay, the, Ma the Michael P. Ryan, the Darrington Evans. Switch over and get some wide receivers with pedigree. Switch over and get some wide receivers that were selected in the second and third round of the NFL draft, uh, whatever draft class they were in, and take some shots on the talent. Okay. Now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. As always, if y'all did, go down there, drop that like, leave that comment, subscribe to the channel, it really, really helps us out. And yeah, that's it. I hope I'll see y'all with the video tomorrow.